Hi, my name is Richard Beaufoy from TirePal, part of the Wheel Solutions Group. This is a quick video to show you how to install and set up your TirePal Solar and TB99 systems. So we'll just head outside to our car and we'll go and set that up for you. Okay, I'm just going to go through now a quick demonstration of how to set up TirePal Solar on your car. It's very straightforward, there's no registration needed because all the sensors have come pre-registered. So, what you get in your pack is monitor and four sensors that are pre-registered. So all that you need to do in the initial case is to simply screw the sensors onto the wheels in place of the dust caps. I'll just do that now. Okay, so you simply need to remove the dust cap. And these sensors come with a dust shield which helps prevent buildup of road dirt around the sensor. Then you turn the dust shield inside out, place that over the valve, push it down as far as you can go. We have a lock nut which provides a bit of security. That goes on next and screws onto the valve. Again, down as far as you can get. And simply take the sensor for the correct wheel position and screw that on as well. You'll hear the air escape, screw it down tight and then fasten back the locking nut snug up against the back of the sensor to secure it in place. Do it finger tight, and there's a special tool which also comes with the kit, which is just used just to tighten it up against, and that means that's not going to come off. Then you reverse the dust shield back over the sensor to give it that bit of extra protection. The monitor that comes with the solar system is very sleek and fits inside uh, the car, just on the dashboard. I'll just demonstrate where it could go. We provide a small sticky pad to mount the monitor on, which can fit conveniently on the dashboard there and then the monitor simply sits on top of that and is held in place securely. So we've installed the sensors on, our, on your vehicle for either the TB99 model or the TirePal Solar and we're now going to go through the setup procedure so we can set these monitors up for you. It's very straightforward but the first thing you need to do is simply switch the monitor on using the power button. So we'll then show the four wheels that you've got on your vehicle. So to get into the settings mode, you simply press and hold the settings button, which is the one indicated by the spanner. Let's go into the settings screen. The first thing it will ask you is the pressure units that you want to use. You can either use PSI or bar, and you can change between these using the plus or minus buttons. So simply one will change, change the bar, again it will change it back. Once you've decided which one you want, again press the set button marked by the spanner. And it will then switch and ask you what temperatures uh, units you want to use, either degrees C or degrees F. Again, the plus and minus buttons will switch between the two. Press once and press again. So if you press and hold the set button, that will lock that in place. And it will switch on to setting the pressures for each axle. Again, as the wheels on each side of an axle will have the same pressures, you set the high and low alerts across the axle. So the default here, it sets on the high pressure alert for your front axle is 44 PSI. We'll change that just for reference purposes, and that is again used using the plus and minus buttons. So we'll take it from 44 down to 40. Again, press the set button to lock that in place and then it will switch to the low pressure alert. This defaults to 29 PSI, and again, just for demonstration purposes, we will adjust that down to 25. Again, you press the set button to lock that in place, and it will move to the rear axle. Default here again is 44 PSI. Again, the plus and minus buttons will allow you to adjust this, so we'll take that down to 40 as well for demonstration purposes. Press the set button to lock that in place and it will switch to the low. Again, we'll take that down to 25 for demonstration purposes and press set to lock that in place. We'll then ask you to set the pressure on the spare wheel if you have one fitted. If you don't have one fitted, simply press the set button again on each of these and it will go through to the next setting. We'll set you the uh, high temperature alert here, which is defaulting to 70 degrees C. This is perfectly adequate for normal driving conditions, so simply press the set button and it will take you back to the very beginning where it asks you about the pressure levels, the pressure units. So you press and hold the set button and that will lock everything in place.
I'm just going to go through some tips and guidance on using your tyre pile system. If you have an issue with your tyre pile system not operating as expected, a basic understanding of how the system works can help with fault diagnosis. For the sensors to send a signal to the monitor, air flow through and agitation of the sensors is needed. The monitor then interprets this information and displays it accordingly. The sensors provided supply pre-programmed to the relevant wheel positions and will always respond, report to the position in respect of the sensor's physical location on the TB99. With the TC215B, the sensors will need to be registered as explained in the setup video and they will also always respond, report to that particular position. Is there an issue with the power supply that you're experiencing? Is your monitor charged? This is indicated by a battery icon on the bottom of the screen and this shows three levels of charge as well as when it is fully discharged. Is the monitor actually switched on? When plugged into a constant supply, the monitor will always display even if the monitor has not been switched on, and that can give the impression that the system is not working when not connected to a power supply. Is the charger firmly inserted into a 12 volt socket? This can actually take more force than you think when plugging in. Also, is that 12 volt supply constant? And the monitor goes to sleep when no motion has been detected for 10 to 15 minutes. It should wake up automatically once motion has been detected. If you have an issue with the display, for example if the backlight is not bright enough, this can be adjusted on your TB99 system as outlined in the manual on page 6. It's easy to switch the backlight off by accident and it's just as easy to switch it back on once you know how to do it. The backlight is quite sensitive and can actually react to differences in light levels between street lights on a journey. If the display is non-reactive, for example if not all tyres are reflected by those solid rectangles around the perimeter of the vehicle, um, it may have been that one of those sensors has gone to sleep. If it's not been moved recently, the sensors could have gone into that sleep mode, um, and that can take place in a few minutes, potentially. And if the vehicle has been at rest for more than 10 minutes, the monitor may be in sleep mode. And in both cases, motion should correct the issue. If there are readings on some, but not all of the positions, are those readings present from sensors which have been most recently removed? If so, the other sensors where there are no readings may have just simply gone to sleep, in which case, agitate them slightly to test that. You can also check the battery within the sensor. It may have shifted slightly, thus need to be slipped back into place. It's also worth checking that the contacts within the sensor are free from corrosion and moisture, as this can also cause signal issues. You can check battery status by swapping with another known good battery, or using a fresh battery. Are those sensors making as secure a connection as possible with the tyre valve? This can be tested by simply reattaching, or also by placing onto another tyre. Remember though that the readings will always show in the same position on the display on the monitor, despite the physical position of the sensor. The monitor location can have an impact on signal reception as well. We have found that if the monitor is positioned in the cubby hole at the base of the centre console, just behind the gear stick, that sensor signal can be affected significantly, both by physical shielding, but also from electrical interference from accessories such as a stereo, trip computer or inbuilt sat-nav if it's fitted. By far the best location for the monitor is mounted on the dashboard using the provided sticky pad or mounting bracket. If you have a problem where you are not getting all of the uh, sensors positions reported on the monitor, it's a possibility, especially with a TB99 or Tire Pile Solar System, you have a spare sensor fitted. When in that position, the display alternates between showing the wheels on the ground and the spare every 10 seconds. A temporary disappearance of a, of a sensor position could be a result of signal interference. This can be common when near radio transmitters. If the problem is persistent, try re-registering that sensor to the monitor, checking the battery is in good condition and that the contacts in the sensor are corrosion free. Hopefully this should have covered any issues that you've experienced and given you the expertise to resolve them. Thank you for watching our video, hopefully it's been helpful and informative, but if you have any queries please feel free to drop us an inquiry on our contact form on our website. My name is Richard Beaufoy, I'm from TirePal.